Hello, Fabric community. My name is Ryan Majidimer. I'm a product manager on the Fabric team. And welcome to the August edition of the Fabric Monthly Update. We've got a lot of exciting features for you this month across all of Fabric. But if you don't know what Fabric is, that includes such areas as Core, Power BI, Synapse, including data warehouse, data engineering, data science, real-time analytics, as well as data factory and data activator. If you want to see all of the content with extra screenshots and links to other blogs, docs, all that kind of stuff, I highly recommend you check out our blog. You can find the blog at aka.mswacfabricblog. You can also find a link directly to this month's post in the description for this video. Also, if you haven't checked out the Fabric community site, I highly recommend you check that out, and you can find that at aka.mswack Fabric Community. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with Core, we've got multitasking navigation improvements. In our latest update, we've introduced an enhancement that preserves all Fabric items opened in a single browser tab on the left navigation bar, even in the event of a page refresh. This ensures you can refresh the page without concern of losing context. Next, we've got monitoring hub support for personalized column options. We've updated the monitoring hub to allow users to personalize activity specific columns. You now have the flexibility to display columns that are relevant to your activities you're focused on. Moving on to Power BI and starting with reporting, we've got the new layout switcher. We've added new buttons that make it easy for you to quickly switch between web and mobile layouts while you're developing your reports. You'll find the new switcher buttons down at the bottom of the screen, right next to the page navigator. Moving on to the new bubble range scaling setting, we are introducing the new bubble range scaling setting for scatter chart and map visuals. This setting gives report creators more control over how the bubble marker sizes respond to data, making it more accurate or distinctive based on your preference. With the magnitude option, the bubble areas closely follow the data proportions. With the data range option, the bubble size limits are mapped to data minimum and maximum. The auto option, which is the default setting for new reports, selects the appropriate option based on data characteristics. For more information, visit our docs. This setting can be adjusted in the formatting panel if you go to markers shape, and range scaling for scatter charts, or bubbles, size, range scaling for maps. For reports authored in earlier Power BI versions, these settings default to deprecated for scatter charts, which differs in the handling of negative values, and data range for app charts. Azure Maps charts will also include this feature in an upcoming product update. We've got some updates to the new on object interaction feature. First is resizing and positioning to the on object menus. We've now added the ability to resize the on object menus horizontally. This is especially helpful when you're working with long field names. We've also improved the positioning of the on object menus to make better use of the canvas space. Previously, when a visual was near the bottom of the canvas, the on object menu was super small and required scrolling to be able to see and use the field wells. Now, the on object menu moves up and stretches into the canvas to bring the field wells into view without needing to scroll. Also, on object format sub selections now support, are now supported in spotlight and focus mode. When spotlighting a visual or expanding the visual in focus mode, you can now use on object formatting to subselect and format styles. In focus mode, it can be hard to tell when you've entered format mode with just the subtle border. To address this, we've added a new button to the header to better indicate when you're in format mode and how to exit format mode while staying in focus mode. Moving on to modeling, First, we've got an update to the order by function. If there are blanks in the data. You can specify where to order them by adding blanks last or blanks first. You can specify how blanks are handled is optional 
and can be combined with specifying the order direction, descending or ascending. Valid values include blanks default. This is the default value. The behavior for numerical values is blank. Values are ordered between zero and negative values. The behavior for strings is blank values are ordered before all strings, including empty strings. Blanks first. Blanks are always ordered on the beginning, regardless of ascending or descending sorting order. And blanks last. Blanks are always ordered on the end, regardless of ascending or descending sorting order. For data connectivity, first up is the new modern data connectivity and discovery experience in data flows. We are excited to introduce the new data connectivity and discovery experience in Dataflow, Dataflow Gen 2, and Datamar. Today, users spend a lot of time finding the right data, the right connection info, and credentials. With the new Get Data experience, we make it easy to browse different fabric artifacts through the One Lake Data Hub. This improvement aims to expedite this process and get you closer to the data that you're looking for in the quickest way possible. Onto the Lakehouse's connector, we've got an update. This update includes significant performance improvements to Lakehouse connectors or to the Lakehouse's connector, I should say. Be sure to update to the August version of the Power BI desktop app and gateway to experience these improvements. In service this month, we've got XMLA write support for Direct Lake datasets. We're excited to announce that the Direct Lake datasets now support XMLA write operations. Now you can use your favorite BI Pro tools and scripts to create and manage Direct Lake data sets. Whether you prefer SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS, Tabular Editor, DAX Studio, or something else, you can connect to your Direct Lake data sets using XMLA endpoints and perform operations such as deploying, customizing, merging, scripting, debugging, and testing. You can use these tools like Azure DevOps or GitHub to implement source control, versioning, and continuous integration for your data models. You can automate and streamline your development and deployment process. You can also use PowerShell or REST APIs to automate tasks such as refreshing or applying changes to your Direct Lake datasets. XMLA Write is incredibly powerful and the key to data modeling efficiency and productivity. For more information about XMLA write support in general, check out our article, Dataset Connectivity with the XMLA Endpoint in the product, in the product documentation. Next, we've got the public preview of automatic replica synchronization for dataset scale out. We're excited to announce that we have finalized dataset scale out configuration APIs and completed the replica synchronization feature. Specifically, you no longer need to enable scale out at the workspace level by using a burdensome XMLA request. The XMLA command is deprecated and will no longer work. You can now enable scale out on a dataset by dataset basis using the Power BI REST API for datasets. You also no longer need to synchronize read replicas manually if you want to take advantage of automatic replica synchronization. Automatic replica synchronization is enabled by default. However, it is also possible to disable automatic synchronization to synchronize the read write and read replicas of a dataset manually for controlled refresh isolation. For mobile, we've got choose your startup content. Power BI mobile app users can now choose which item they want to have open automatically whenever they launch the Power BI mobile app. This feature saves time for users who mostly view a specific item on their mobile app and don't want to waste time navigating from the app's homepage every time they open the app. To configure a launch item for yourself, open the item you want to see when you launch the app. This can be a specific report page, dashboard, scorecard, report in an app, or an entire app. When the item is open, open the More Options Ellipse menu, or the dot 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 menu, 
from the header and select set as launch item. This will mark the item as a launch item. Only one item at a time can be marked as a launch item. Administrators can also use mobile device management, MDM tools to remotely configure a launch item for a group of users, for example, frontline workers, to simplify their experience with the app. In developers, published app source visuals now generate leads in Partner Center and CRM. Until recently, your customer leads may have come solely from customer, cu customers downloading them from AppSource.com. However, now you have access to even more leads through Power BI, both the desktop and web embedded app source. To access these new leads, simply navigate to the referrals workspace and partner center. Here you can see all the leads you received from Power BI, as well as those from AppSource.com. Plus, if you're connected to your CRM, you'll see them there too. By utilizing these new leads from Power BI, you can potentially reach more customers and increase your business's growth. So be sure to check your referrals workspace and CRM regularly to stay on top of your leads. Publish a Power BI project directly from Power BI Desktop. You're now able to directly publish your Power BI project, PBIP, files directly from Power BI Desktop, eliminating the need to save it as a PBIX in order to activate the publish feature. For visualizations, we've got some new visuals in AppSource. We've got Performance Flow by XViz, Timelines by BiChamp, Composed Line Area Bar Chart by Develop Funnels, Galageo for Power BI, and Radial Chart also by Develop Funnels. We've also got the editor's pick of the quarter. We've got Echo Planning Enterprise, Planning Power BI Write Back, Sunburst Chart by PowerViz, Spider Chart for Power BI by Visio Chart, Advanced Trellis, Wax Small Multiples by XViz, Drill Down Combo Pro, Zebra BI Cards, and Shielded HTML Viewer. Moving right along, we've got Drill Down Combo Bar Pro by Zoom Charts. Drill Down Combo Bar Pro by Zoom Charts offers a wide selection of customizable options, letting creators build everything from regular bar charts to box and whisker plots. This visual also offers powerful cross chart filtering capabilities combined with intuitive on chart interactions. Next, we've got Sumpers Chart by PowerViz. We're thrilled to present the new Sun, or <laughs> they're thrilled to pre present the new Sunpress chart by PowerViz, a powerful visualization designed to display hierarchical data in a user-friendly and intuitive format. With its concentric circle design, you can easily display part-to-whole relationships and gain valuable insights from your data. Next, we've got XViz Performance Flow by Lumal. XViz Performance Flow by Lumal is an integrated business flow monitoring visual with an interactive KPI tree visualization for organizational performance management use cases. It offers insights into people, places, processes, and entities with performance indicators, trend lines, and advanced alerting on goals, metrics, and their variances. Moving on to Synapse and Data Warehouse, we have SSD caching, T-SQL queries targeting massive amounts of data not fitting in memory cache suffer from cache misses and higher latency due to repetitive reads from remote storage. SSD caching stores frequently accessed data on local disks in highly optimized formats, significantly reducing IO latency and accelerating query processing. On to data engineering, we have high concurrency mode for notebooks. We're thrilled to announce session sharing in Fabric through high concurrency mode for data engineering and data science workloads. You can run notebooks simultaneously on the same cluster without compromising performance or security when paying for a single session. Session sharing is strictly within a single user boundary offering enhanced security and isolation also allowing you to do more while paying less. On to data science, 
we have model and experiment usability improvements. We've made several usability enhancements to our model and experiment tracking features. You can now stay informed with real-time notifi notifications for model and experiment updates. Plus, users can now enjoy a more seamless browsing and comparison experience with improved run list and model list views. Last for data science, we have new data science samples that are coming to Microsoft Fabric. We're thrilled to announce that Microsoft Fabric is introducing two exciting new data science samples that showcase the power of Fabric's capabilities. The first sample focuses on bank customer churn problems and aims to build a machine learning model to predict whether bank customers would churn or not. The second sample is about machine failure and revolves around the use of machine learning to have more systematic approach to fault diagnosis to proactively identify issues and take actions before a machine's actual failure. Both these samples provide a comprehensive display of end-to-end -end data science workflows, demonstrating Microsoft Fabric's versatility in addressing diverse, real-world challenges with AI-driven solutions. Moving on to real-time analytics, we have KQL database support for inline Python, Fabric KQL database supports running Python code embedded in Cousteau query language, or KQL, using the Python plugin. The plugin runtime is hosted in a sandbox, an isolated and secured environment hosted on KQL database compute nodes. This sandbox contains the language engine as well as common mathematical and scientific, scientific packages. The plugin extends KQL native functionalities with a huge archive of OSS packages, enabling Fabric users to run advanced algorithms such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, statistical tests, time series analysis, and many more as part of the KQL query. The Python plugin runs as a user-defined function, UDF, using a Python script, the Python script gets tabular data as its input and produces tabular output. The plugin is disabled by default. Before you start, enable the Python plugin in your KQL database. To enable the plugin, browse to your KQL database, select Manage, Plugins, and enable the plugin by toggling the button on. Next, we have KQL database provisioning in a few seconds. The KQL database provisioning process has been optimized. You can now provision a KQL database within a few seconds. All you need to do is to create a new KQL database, is to give it a name, and after a few seconds, you'll have a fully functional KQL database that you can now start ingesting and querying your data. For Data Factory, starting with Dataflow's Gen 2 and Power Query, we have Edit Connection in Manage Connections. The Manage Connections feature was re recently released with only the capability to view the linked connections to your data flow and the ability to unlink a connection for your data flow. We've now added the capability to edit a connection credential and the gateway from the, within the dialog. Enabling Staging Labels. The concept of staging data was introduced in Dataflow's Gen 2 for Microsoft Fabric, and now you have the ability to define what queries within the data flow should use the staging mechanisms or not. Publish data flow without staged queries. With the introduction of the ability to set the behavior of a query to be staged or not, you can now set all your queries to be evaluated without any staging and load the data directly to a destination of your choice. Note that your data flow Gen 2 must at least have a single query with a data destination defined. Limit to number of queries in a data flow when publishing. When creating a data flow Gen 2, we're now modifying the maximum number of entities that can be part of a particular data flow. The new maximum number of entities is 50. If you have 51 or more entities in your data flow, you will receive a warning letting you know that you need to reduce the number of entities to a maximum of 50 before you can publish your data flow. You're still able to save your data flow as a draft before you make any changes. Moving on to refresh history. 
direct navigation to last failed refresh. If you've ever been in a situation where your data flow refresh failed, you can now click the warning sign right next to the timestamp in the refreshed column and get taken directly to the refreshed history dialog for that particular refresh attempt. Statistics for tables. Inside the refresh history dialog, you're now able to drill down to a particular table and see the volume processed for it as well as the endpoint where the volume was processed. More information such as duration, start time, and end time are still available to you in this dialog. For connectors, we've got an update for the Lakehouse connector. This is the same update we mentioned a minute ago in the Power BI section, but to mention it again here, this update includes significant performance improvements for Lakehouse's connector. Be sure to update to the August version of Power BI Desktop and Gateway to experience these improvements. For other improvements, we're actively listening to your feedback and the feedback of thousands of customers who are trying out Dataflow's Gen 2 today. Some of the feedback doesn't directly translate to new features, but rather to fixes or quality improvements to our backend and how reliable our service can be. Our team has been able to triage and work through more than 600 fixes and improvements in the past month. This list that I'm about to go through is a small, is a small subset of the categories and these fixes that impact that you'll now be able to see today in Dataflow Gen 2. First is better error messages. We're actively improving the error messages and have improved some of the most common error messages in the past few weeks. There'll be multiple improvements on the error messages and categorization front in the coming months, but we're happy to be making tactical changes today to improve the experience and make it clear to users on what could be happening to produce the error. Multitasking efforts. There have been some issues in regard to multitasking in Fabric. A few of those have been addressed, but we're actively working on a much better experience for Dataflow Gen 2 with multitasking in mind, much similar to how other act or artifacts leverage multitasking capabilities. Reliability and performance. We're continuously working towards improving the reliability and performance of Dataflow Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. This translates into much faster refresh times with more reliability. Moving on to data pipelines and starting with connectors, we've got the FTP connector. We're excited to announce that the FTP connector is now available to use in your data factory data pipelines. In your data pipeline, you can now create a new connection to your FTP data source to copy, extract, and transform data. For productivity, we're gonna be starting with lookup activity for Lakehouse, Data Warehouse, and KQL database. The lookup activity now connects to Fabric Lakehouse, Data Warehouse, and KQL database. This now makes it easier for you to read or look up records, tables, names, and other values from your Fabric artifacts to use in downstream activities in your data pipeline. Next is get metadata activity for a Lakehouse and Data Warehouse. The get metadata activity now connects to Fabric Lakehouse and Data Warehouse making it easy to retrieve metadata from your data in your Fabric artifacts to use downstream in your data pipeline. Pipeline run status is now available. We've recently added pipeline run status so that developers can easily see the status of a pipeline run. You can now view your pipeline run status from the output panel. Secure input and output options for set variable activity. We've added advanced settings for the set variable activity called secure input and secure output. When you enable secure import or output, you can hide sensitive information from being captured in logs. And last but not least, we move on to data activator. First is trigger and property design template. As mentioned last month, We've been working on a new experience for designing triggers, and it's now available to preview. You can now see three cards in every trigger, select, detect, and act. Select is where you choose the value you want to monitor. It can be a direct reference to a column from an event. Once you've selected an input, you'll, you'll see a preview and can add grouping, smoothing, or filters 
to get the right value. The detect card is where you specify the conditions and thresholds that you want to take action on. You select the type of threshold, enter the values, and you can optionally choose settings like firing the trigger every time the condition is met, or only when it's met a certain number of times over a long period. Finally, the act card lets you set the action you want data activator to take. You can choose the recipient, optional information, etc. as you build it out. Quickly assign columns as properties in an object. From the data view, you can quickly assign an event stream to a new or existing object and make multiple properties from one UI. You need to choose the key column that identifies the individual object instances that you care about, e.g. a package ID, employee ID, location name, etc. Then in the Assign Properties dropdown, select the columns from your event stream that you want to use as properties in the object. You can use the Assign to Existing option to map a second event stream onto an existing object, combining data from two events. Data Activator now supports Power BI visuals with a time axis. Data Activator now supports Power BI visuals with a time axis. So for instance, we can create an alert if the occupancy measure on the visual goes below 60%. Note that Data Activator has detected the presence of the time axis and, is, and can highlight this in the alert pane. Trigger Power Automate flows from Data Activator. When a data activator trigger fires, you can now trigger a power automate flow. This means that you can use data activator to drive actions in any system that power automate can connect to. You can send an alert to a third party alerting system, log a ticket in a ticketing system, or call a rest API to trigger actions in an operational system. This list is almost endless. To connect data activator to power automate, you create a custom action. A custom action is a reusable action template that triggers a flow. That's all for this month. Tell us in the comments what was your favorite feature, or even better, give us feedback about these updates. I'd love to hear about it. If you have any feedback on these videos, the blog, anything like that, please let me know. I read every single one of the comments. Also, if you have any questions about the features or just want to talk about Fabric in general, head over to the community site aka.ms WAC Fabric Community. Again, my name is Ryan Majidimer. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.